everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar Wednesday brought to you by UK University Search. Today we're going to be exploring the UK to find out what it's like to study in different areas from London all the way up to Scotland. We know you can't get out and about to explore open days at the moment so this is the perfect opportunity for you to chat to lots of different universities from the comfort of home. We have six fantastic panellists joining us today to introduce their universities to you and answer your questions. First up, we have Kyle Blaine from the University of Glasgow, who will be talking about studying in Scotland. Then we'll pass over to Bex Bork from the University of Huddersfield to discuss studying in Yorkshire. Next up is Andrew Moore from Manchester Metropolitan University, chatting about studying in the Northwest. Then we'll be talking to Amelia McDonnell from the University of Suffolk about studying in the east of England. Next up will be Mandy Corr from the University of Roehampton, who will be discussing studying in London. And finally, we'll be chatting to Sharon Tamale from the University of Hertfordshire about studying in the southeast. We'll be finishing up today with a question and answer session. So if you're watching on Zoom and you would like to submit a question, please click on the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. You can also post questions in the live chat on YouTube, but please be aware this chat is monitored and any inappropriate content will be reported to your school or college. Let's get started and we're going to travel up to Scotland first. Please welcome onto your screens, Carl Blaine from the University of Glasgow. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Kyle and I'm from the University of Glasgow and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about studying in Scotland. Now hopefully I can share my screen with you all. There we go. <clears throat> so I thought I would start off broad today um, and just look at what Scotland has to offer. So we were voted the most beautiful country in the world by Rough Guides in 2019. Um, so we are a strong, strong contender in terms of places to come and study if you're looking for pretty. We're also strong in terms of outdoors um, and we've got really good culture and history. So we've got the largest arts festival in the world with Edinburgh um, and you can't walk about two metres without getting some kind of beautiful architecture um, or something historic here in Scotland. In terms of where we are, we're not a million miles away. Um, a lot of people um, from down south often think that it's going to take ages and ages to get to Scotland, but we're only about four hours away from London, both to Glasgow and Edinburgh by train, and we have two international airports in the central belt as well, which means you can actually get to Scotland within, within the hour. Okay. So why should you study in Scotland? So we do have three, four and five year degrees, but most students in Scotland will study for four years. So that is an extra year compared to our counterparts down south. We have 19 universities in Scotland and they range wildly from ancient universities like Glasgow, where I'm calling you from, uh, through to the more modern ones such as Aberte or Stirling. Uh, we've also got campus universities and city universities as well. And according to what uni, we also have the lowest level of graduate unemployment in the UK. So that means that there is a pretty good chance of you studying in Scotland and jumping into a job after you've finished your degree. In terms of Glasgow, um, so Glasgow itself is the fourth oldest English speaking university in the world. So we've been doing what we do for a really long time. First were Oxford and Cambridge, then with St Andrews and then us. As you can see from my pictures on my slides, we are Hogwartsy for use of a better word. Um, in terms of league tables and rankings, we are an incredibly, incredibly strong university too. We're in the world top 100 and we're incredibly international. So we have about 28,000 students and they come from over 140 different countries. And it's difficult to be on campus without realizing that. Um, different nationalities and backgrounds feed into your education at Glasgow, but you'll also meet them in your halls of residence too. We're also part of the research elite Russell group, and we have the joint first in, we're joint first in the Russell group, sorry, for student satisfaction. So we're an incredibly strong contender when it comes to looking at the likes of league tables and rankings. What do we offer at Glasgow in terms of our degrees? Well, we have 100 single honours programmes and 600 joint honours programmes. And as I mentioned before, we, most of our degrees are four years long. 
And these are a mix between what we call our professional degrees, but also our flexible degrees. So professional degrees are things like medicine, dentistry, education and veterinary medicine. Um, and yesterday, the Complete University Guide came out and showed that four out of the five top med schools in the UK are in Scotland. So if you are looking for medicine or other professional degrees, Scotland is a really strong bet for you. The thing that makes Scotland a little bit unique compared to our counterparts down south is the flexibility, however. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about how our flexible degree system works in areas like arts, science and social science. So the first thing to note is that when you come to study at a number of our universities in Scotland, you're not actually tied down to the subject that you decide on your UCAS. For example, this student here has decided to apply for English literature. But once they're through the door to Glasgow, we'll actually ask them to pick up two other subjects from the College of Arts. This person's decided to do history and English language. And all three of these subjects are just as important as each other. So we give you what we call flexibility and breadth in your first two years, because you will continue three subjects into year two. Most students will continue to, and change one of them. This means that you're getting to try different things out. We offer a range of subjects that you probably have never even contemplated before. So we want to give you a chance to try things out before you decide specifically what it is that you want to get your degree in. It's only at the end of year two that you actually decide what you want to get your degree in. So despite this student applying for English literature, they actually have the choice between English literature or history because they've studied both of them over their first two years. So this student here has decided to continue through and get an English literature degree. However, they could have split their degree 50-50 despite only applying for English literature and getting a degree in English literature and history. You'll notice at the top that we in Scotland call our degrees MAs. They are still undergraduate degrees. The reason for that is purely because we're, an, we're ancient universities. So they've let us call our undergraduate bachelor degrees MAs. There's literally no difference whatsoever. It just looks a bit nicer on a CV. Um, an example here as well for chemistry. If you're doing sciences, it's very, very similar. You'll study a range of subjects in your first two years, usually only two in your second year, but then you will still have the choice to decide whether you want to continue on the stream that you started on, join your subjects together, or you can actually completely jump ship. So this student here has the prerequisite to do maths, so you can actually jump into a different subject if you'd rather get a degree in that. That is the flexibility that we offer in, in Glasgow and at the ancient universities in, Sco in Scotland. Um, and this is something that makes us a little bit different to most of the universities down south. I'm happy to answer questions on this in the Q&A, um, but that is one of the biggest differences between studying in Scotland and studying elsewhere in the UK. Just to finish up, um, I want to talk a little bit about funding. So at Glasgow, alongside many other UK universities, we offer a UK access bursary to students from England, Wales and Northern Ireland. This is based on your household income. And we also offer an excellent scholarship. So at Glasgow, we offer £1,000 a year to any students attaining three A's at A level. The big thing to note, though, is that it actually costs no more at Glasgow to do four years rather than three. Um, we, we give you a year for free, so it'll cost exactly the same to do our four year flexible degrees as it would to do three years in England. So that's where I'll leave you. Um, thanks very much for listening. But as I say, I'm more than happy to take questions in the Q&A later on. That's great. Thank you very much. Next up, we're going to be heading down to Yorkshire and we're going to be talking to Vex Sport from the University of Huddersfield. Hello. So my name's Bex and I'm a Schools and Colleges Liaison Officer at the University of Huddersfield. Um, and I'm just going to share, so give me a second and I'll just share my presentation. So we'll just go to the beginning of it. So what I'm going to be talking about today is um, the University of Huddersfield, because obviously that's the institution that I work at. But I also want to talk about the region of Yorkshire. So the University of Huddersfield is based in Yorkshire. Um, we are based in West Yorkshire, um, but I want to talk about the region as a whole as well, because it does have a lot of benefits. 
So moving on to this slide, um, there's some pictures on here so that you can actually see the university campus um, for the University of Huddersfield. So the University of Huddersfield is a campus university. So that means that all of our buildings are next to each other and we're all on the same site. Now, this is quite nice because it feels almost like a student bubble, because when you're walking from lecture to lecture, um, you will be passing other students and um, students who are socialising, members of staff on the campus. Um, whereas if you chose to go to a non campus university, you would actually find um, that one building may be at one side of the city, another building may be in another location in the city. And actually, when you're walking from lecture to lecture, you might actually find that there's people going to work and there's the daily sort of routine of the city in between. There's no right or wrong with whether you choose a campus university or an on-campus university. It really is just personal preference. So what you want from a university. The University of Huddersfield is a very scenic campus. So uh, the bottom left photo, you can see um, that there's actually a working canal. Um, we've also had nearly 156 million pounds worth um, of investment in recent years. So all the facilities on campus are state-of-the-art facilities. Um, and this is really important because um, what we want to do is replicate what um, the real life work environment is like. So we want the same equipment that you'll have in the workplace um, and we want to simulate that environment. The other thing to mention with the University of Huddersfield is that our campus is a campus university, but it's, it's um, situated right next to the town of Huddersfield. So you've got the best of both worlds in terms of the location. A couple of other things to mention about the University of Huddersfield. Um, one of the things would be our first class teaching. So we're actually joint first in England um, for the proportion of professionally qualified teaching staff. So this means that our teaching staff don't only know their stuff when it comes to their subject, but they have the skills um, to effectively teach students. So to transfer that knowledge to you as students. The other thing to mention is the TEF award. So the University of Huddersfield has a TEF gold award. So the TEF award means that we deliver consistently outstanding learning and teaching to the highest quality found in the UK because the gold award is the highest you can get. Some other institutions may have um, a bronze award, they may have a silver award. So it's definitely worth checking um, to actually see what award the university you're interested in, what award they have for the um, TEF framework. One of the other things that I wanted to mention um, was Huddersfield University's um, great track record in getting graduates into employment. So just to give you a statistic, 97% um, of our graduates are in work or full-time um, or further, sorry, study within six months of graduating from the university. So that is at a very, very high rate. So it shows that we have really good links with employers. Another way that you can see these really good links with employers is through um, our sandwich courses. So one of the things we're really big on at the University of Huddersfield is getting students um, to get real life work experience whilst they're still studying their degree. So they may do, um, for example, a module. So they may choose a module on their course that would expect them to do so many hours of work experience. Um, the other way to do it is to do a sandwich course. So say you were a student who wanted to do a three year um, bachelor's in English. How it would work is that you'd study for two years. So you do two years of your degree. You then do a full year in, um, in work. So do work experience for a full year. You then come back and finish your final year of your degree. So it would mean that your degree would be four years instead of the three years but there are many advantages to doing this. One of them is that quite often you actually get paid um, whilst you're doing that work experience. And some of the salaries that we've seen from students um, are really generous salaries as well. The other point to make is that um, when you apply for jobs after you finish your degree, you're gonna have that work experience that you can talk about in not only CV, 
but in your interview. Um, and you can also apply that knowledge when you start that job as well. So it might increase your chances of getting the job in the first place. And the last thing I just want to mention is your assignments in your final year of university. So you come back, you finish your placement year, and we actually find that students do better in their final year ass assessments because they've got that real life um, experience that they can relate to their final year projects. So that's something to note as well. The other thing I did want to mention was the student accommodation at the University of Huddersfield. So we don't actually own any accommodation ourselves. We have a recommended provider um, and dig student accommodation um, are our recommended provider. So they have a site called Stores Hall um, and Stores Hall is situated a 20 minute bus ride away from the university campus. So it's really nice because you have this student village at Stores Hall, but then 20 minute bus ride, you can go to the university campus and also, like I said, the town is just next door to the campus. The facilities at the accommodation are fantastic. So you've got loads of stuff. And I just want to show you just one of the pictures here. So you have um, a cinema room. They have a games console room. They have a venue on site. And um, so they do have a lot of events there. And all of the rooms have en suites as well. They have a gym on site. Um, and it's just a very nice atmosphere when you're actually at the accommodation. If you did want to find out more information about that accommodation, you can go to the DIGS website or you can go to the Huddersfield website and all the information is on there. Just to mention Huddersfield in a little bit more detail. So Huddersfield is a bustling town, so there's always something to do. Um, from the Lawrence Batley Theatre to the John Smith Stadium, where there's a lot of sports. There's also fantastic shopping, so that's at the Kingsgate Shopping Centre. Um, but in contrast to that, there's also a lot of independent shops, which is also quite nice. There's a lot of social spaces um, within, the, within the town of Huddersfield itself. So there's a lot of places to go and get food and drink. But all of this, so the hustle and bustle of the town, um, has got a really nice backdrop of countryside. So you do have the Pennines, you have the Peak District, um, that's in very close distance to the University of Huddersfield as well. So that's just a bit of a snapshot into Huddersfield, which is obviously based in West Yorkshire. But Huddersfield does have um, great transport links. So as you can see from a map here, we're really close to Manchester. Um, so if you wanted to hop on the train and go for a day trip in Manchester, it's really easy to do that. But coming back to Yorkshire, um, just to mention a few of the places within the region, there's Leeds, um, and Leeds is just 22 minutes on the train. There's York, Bradford, Sheffield, um, and all these places are really, really close. So you can go from the town to any of these cities or other towns in the region. Just to kind of summarize um, some of the benefits then of studying within the region um, of Yorkshire. The first thing that I wanted to mention was the cheaper living cost. So for example, our accommodation, um, it starts actually from um, £87 per week um, and that's a lot lower than you'd find it at other places around the country and it's the same for most of Yorkshire but actually the living cost does tend to be cheaper um, and as a student your student loan will actually be um, outside of London it'll be the same amount regardless of where you choose to go so if you can go somewhere that has a cheaper cost of living you may actually find that you've got more money left over um, for social activities or for course materials and that kind of thing. The other thing to mention is the amount of choice within the region. So obviously I work for the University of Huddersfield um, and that's what I'm talking about mostly today to put things into context. But um, York has two universities, Leeds I believe has three universities, Bradford has a university, um, Sheffield has two universities, there's loads to choose from. So I would encourage you to have a look on the UCAS website to have a look at the other institutions within the region. But also it's bursting with things to do. There's always something to do within the region, depending um, you know, what, what your interest is, you can always find something. So from the rock climbing walls in Sheffield, um, to the medieval history in York, um, to the bustling um, sort of social atmosphere of Huddersfield town, there's always something to do. And the last thing to mention is actually job opportunities. 
So we find that students who may not necessarily have been from a region when they moved here for university, we do find that most students, um, or a lot of them certainly, decide to stay within the region to work after graduating, um, because we do have a lot of big employers. So just to name a few, um, we have Channel 4, we have Burberry, we have Rockstar Games. There's a lot going on in the region in terms of prospects after you've graduated. If you do want to find out more information, please go to the University of Huddersfield website. We have um, a virtual open day happening soon where you can get loads more information. Um, go to UCAS, as I said, for information on other institutions, but also go on the Yorkshire website um, and you can find out loads more about all the fun and exciting things that are happening within the region of Yorkshire. Thank you very much for listening and I look forward to answering your questions at the end of the webinar. Thank you very much, Bex. Next up, we're going to be heading over to Manchester and we're going to be talking to Andrew Moore from Manchester Metropolitan University. Hi there, yes, uh, my name's Andy. I'm from Manchester Metropolitan University. I'm a student recruitment officer at the university. So I'm gonna to talk to you today um, a little bit about, about Manchester as a city, but then also at the university as well, um, where I work, Manchester Metropolitan University. Okay, let's show you the presentation. Okay, so yeah, we're going to be talking about student life in Manchester. We're going to touch, touch upon a few different topics. Um, the first one of which is Manchester Met the University. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Then we're going to move on to accommodation. Um, accommodation in the city, how that looks, the students' union and sport, how that looks at, in the university and in the city in general, other opportunities and experiences at Manchester Met and the city of Manchester, and then we're going to talk to you a lot more in depth about the actual city of Manchester itself. So the university, first of all, um, it's a modern university with a proud history. So the university dates back to 1824 when it was known as the Manchester Mechanics Institute um, and it changed to Manchester Met in 1992. It's a university with a lot of investments. So over the past few years, we've invested about 300 million pounds into the university and we've committed a further 400 million pounds into academic buildings, student residences and IT systems, which you'll see popping up over the next couple of years. We've got a brand new arts and human Humanities building opening later this year and then possibly next year we'll be looking at the new School of Digital Arts which will be opening. Now we're very much into sustainability at Manchester Met, uh, we're one of the greenest universities in the UK. We were ranked second in the People and Planet League in 2019 uh, to be one of the greenest universities. Uh, we're very much in demand, so we're in the top 10 most popular universities to apply for on UCAS. Uh, that translates into the fact that we've got about 36,000 students at Manchester Met. And then looking at that across the region or across Manchester, Manchester has about 99,000 students across Manchester Met, the University of Manchester, University of Salford and the Royal Northern College of Music. So if you could be thinking about um, perhaps moving to a city for university, you'd be thinking about accommodation as well. So um, if you're moving into a city, you might be thinking, oh, do I want to live in the middle of the city in the hustle and bustle, or do I want to live just outside and travel in? Uh, in Manchester Met, we're very lucky that nearly all of our accommodation buildings are based on campus, which is in the city centre. We've got lots of different types of accommodation, from apartments to eco-friendly townhouses and standard rooms within halls. Now, those um, type, different types of accommodation will come in different formats. Some will have ensuite bathrooms, some won't have ensuite bathrooms. Um, be wary of the price, difference with the, with price differences with those as there can be a little bit of a jump. Also, the, the sort of um, layout of each accommodation is quite different. So in some, you might be living in an apartment with just two or three or four other people. In others, you might be sharing with eight, nine or ten. Um, obviously, quite a big difference between those. So you need to sort of be thinking about now, do you want to be living in accommodation with just a few people so you've got a quieter space uh, for studying? Or perhaps do you want to live in a larger residence where you get the opportunity to meet uh, more different people? Um, going on to the students' union. Um, so we have a brand new students' union at Manchester Met. Um, it's a great sort of one-stop shop to go to in terms of you can go for something to eat or drink, play on consoles, use um, pool tables, there's a little shop in there and everything like that. Also across Manchester, the University of Manchester, their student union regularly, regularly hosts gigs from um, local, um, regional, and also uh, international acts. So you can literally just wander down the road to that student union to go and see some gigs. 
Um, student unions are also great in terms of they can offer you special aid advice, you can get involved in student campaigns. Um, there's over 100 different clubs and societies at Manchester Met Student Union, which is great. Student societies and clubs are a great way to get to know people and great, great to get to know people who have a similar interest to you. However, if there is something that you're interested in that we don't offer, then you can apply for a grant from the Student Union to set up your own club or society. So um, sports at Manchester Met or in Manchester in general. So there's extensive sports facilities at Manchester Met. Um, all of our students have access to our sports facilities. The main one is the what's called the, the Platte Lane Sports Complex, which is the former training facility of Manchester City. However, there's also the Sugden Sports Centre and the Aquatic Centre. They're available for all students across Manchester and the Aquatic Centre includes a, an Olympic sized swimming pool. There's more than 60 different sports clubs in, at Manchester Met, so there's loads of different choice, um, whether it's from beginner level or more experienced. If you do play sport at a higher level, I would suggest that you maybe have a look at some sports scholarships. Um, we offer a sports scholarship at Manchester Met. Um, if you were successful in getting that, you'd be rewarded with a package worth up to £7,000. On a more sort of casual basis, we also do like drop-in classes, sports, you know, gym classes, that kind of thing. They're great if you just want to sort of like keep active but in a much more informal way. And again, it's an opportunity to meet other students. Um, so another thing I want to talk about is place our placements and study broad years. So they commonly take place between the second and third year. Uh, of a university degree. Now, location is quite important with things like placements because you want to think, is there going to be a lot of options in terms of placements in that city that I want to go to? Um, Manchester is a very much a growing city economically. Um, the growth is higher than the average in the UK. If you've ever been to Manchester, you'll see there's buildings popping up left, right and centre. It's a really quick moving place. Uh, that means there's a lot of options in terms of placements. Uh, we have something called Placement Wednesdays at Manchester Met, so you can go along and meet employers and that will help you to, to find that placement if that's something that you want to do. Um, study abroad years as well, one of the advantages with us being such a large university is we can offer um, study abroad years all over the world from North America, Europe, the Far East and Australia. So there's plenty to go out there and the vast majority of people who do do a study abroad year do find it to be their favourite part of their degree. So it's something we're thinking about. So let's talk a little bit more about Manchester. Um, so as I mentioned before, Manchester is one of the most populous and popular student cities in the UK and Europe as well. It's famous for lots of different things, of course, sport. So in Manchester, there's a greater density of sporting venues than any other city in the UK. It's very uh, um, famous for football, of course, Manchester United and Manchester City can go along and take in a game there at Old Trafford or the Etihad. Um, it is possible to get tickets for, for either club, particularly if it's a, a weeknight match. Um, we have lots of other sports teams that play in the top leagues of their, of their respective sports, for example, Lancashire Cricket Club, Sale Sharks for Rugby Union, Salford Reds for Rugby League, uh, Manchester Giants for basketball, so there's lots to go out there. Manchester is very famous for music, of course. There's so many different music venues across the city where you can go and take gigs in from small ones, uh, but then also large ones as well, like Manchester Reno, Manchester Apollo. Uh, we're quite lucky in Manchester in that um, pretty much all bands, when they're doing a world tour, will, will, will make a stop in Manchester. So it's a great place uh, to be able to go and see your favourite artists. In terms of um, culture for museums and galleries, we have the largest concentration of, of museums and art galleries in any city outside of London, so there's lots to see there. Um, nightlife, there's, you can have a different kind of experience in, in all kinds of different parts of the city. For example, if you're looking for kind of like student bars and things like that, there's loads of those on Oxford Road, which is where the two uh, biggest universities are. If you're looking for more sort of upmarket type things, there's spinning fields for that. If you're into more sort of bohemian scene, then you can go to the northern quarter, you can sort of explore that area and the little hidden bars that are around. Um, if you're looking for more like waterside drinks, there's Castlefield or Deansgate Locks for that. And then there's also uh, the village, um, which is home to um, the world famous Pride Festival. Um, which is a, a fantastic part of the city as well. Okay, so um, the last thing that I want to talk about is sort of where Manchester is in terms of the, the region. Uh, so it's very easy to get from, from Manchester to where the place is, for example, Manchester to Liverpool is only 35 minutes on the train. If you wanted to go up to the Lake District, one of the most beautiful parts of the country, it's only just over an hour on the train to there. If you want to go over to Leeds or, or Sheffield, it's less than an hour on the train over there. Or if you wanted to go down to, to London, 
it's only two hours on the train from, from Manchester Piccadilly. So uh, one thing that I recommend to everybody is, is looking at universities to try and attend an open day. Um, all universities are still, uh, well, most universities are still hosting open day, open days. Most of them are online at the moment, of course. Um, we have an open week coming up at Manchester Met next week. It's a great opportunity to meet um, other students, talk to course tutors, find out more about student life and find out a little bit more about that city or region that it is that you want to study in. Okay, that's everything from me. So uh, I look forward to answering your questions um, at the end of the session. Thanks. Thank you very much, Andy. Next up, we are going to be heading down to Suffolk and we're going to be talking to Amelia McDonnell from the University of Suffolk. Hi everyone, it's Amelia here from the Student Recruitment and Outreach Team at the University of Suffolk. And in this session, I'm just gonna tell you um, a little bit about studying in East Anglia. So just bear with me while I share my screen. Sorry, bear with me one second. Okay. Um, as you can see, uh, East Anglia is a well-connected part of the country. Um, it's an hour or less um, by train um, into London for Ipswich or Cambridge, even less if you're studying in Colchester um, or in um, Chelmsford. We've also got Stansted Airport in um, Essex, which is one of the busiest airports in the UK. So it's actually really good for people who um, might be coming to university from um, across the world. One of the most common questions that I get asked um, actually when I'm speaking to students is where is Suffolk? Um, so perhaps you guys are wondering that yourself. Um, it might be that you've never had the chance to visit the east of England. Um, maybe when you think of us, you kind of think of tractors and not very good football teams. Um, but there's a lot more to East Anglia than that. So you just use the next few minutes to give you a bit of a kind of explore of the region and tell you some of the reasons why I think you should definitely be including East Anglia when you're considering university choices. So we're home to a really diverse range of universities. So whatever the experience you're looking for, you should be able to find it here. Um, at Suffolk, we are a small university. So we kind of, we've spoken a bit with other unis about the differences between campus and city unis. Suffolk is kind of a cross between both. So all of our buildings are closely grouped. Um, it's a five minute walk from kind of one side of our campus to the other, um, but it's only a 10 minute walk from the town centre. So you do feel nice and kind of integrated as well. Um, we're based on the waterfront in Ipswich, which is the, probably the prettiest part of the town. And it's also seen millions of pounds worth of regeneration over the last few years. We've also got um, some big campus universities in the region. So we've got Essex based in Colchester, um, the University of East Anglia up in Norwich. Um, we've got Anglia Ruskin with big campuses in Cambridge and Chelmsford. Um, and we've also got uh, Norwich University of the Arts. So if you're thinking about um, a creative course, that's a really great one to consider. It's very small, it's based in a beautiful part of Norwich. And then of course, we also have the University of Cambridge, which is world famous. It's a collegiate university, which is quite different. So if you study there, you're part of the university as a whole, um, but you'll also be part of a smaller college. Some people think that East Anglia is completely rural. So what I said earlier about kind of the tractor thing, it's actually really full of lovely towns and busy cities. So we've got Norwich, Ipswich, Cambridge, Colchester and Chelmsford are probably the biggest. And these have all the shops, cafes, nightlife that you could ever want. One other good thing about being based in a really busy um, town or city is that there's plenty of part-time job opportunities. So something students ask quite a lot is, um, you know, will I be able to work to kind of boost my income a little bit when I'm at uni? 
absolutely like it's a very touristy region of the country as well so we often find that you know our students are kind of employed at cafes restaurants selling ice cream kind of steering the punts in cambridge and that kind of thing but the employability goes on after graduation so our towns have got thriving employment markets um, graduates can find work in a huge range of, range of industries, so particularly energy, renewable energy, technology, research, agriculture, uh, financial services, um, it's a huge tourism industry. So our graduates at Suffolk, 96% of them are in work or further study within six months of graduating. And East Anglia is also the second fastest region in the country for high growth firms. So that basically means that firms are expanding here faster than almost anywhere else. We also have above average employment rate. So ours is 74%, or 78%, sorry, which is 4% above the national average. We've got really good transport connections um, between the major towns and cities in the region. So it's really easy to make kind of a nice day out. You'll have a student rail card. So if you do fancy sort of popping from switch to Cambridge for the day, that's really easy. Couldn't really talk about the East of England without mentioning Ed Sheeran's probably our most um, famous recent exports. So there's loads of history in the region. Um, you know, there's loads of and everything from Anglo-Saxon sites, Roman town of Colchester, all the way through to um, the castle on the hill made famous by Ed Sheeran's song. That's based in Framlingham. Why not go and have a quick look round? Although the rules for modern football were established in Cambridge in 1848, uh, the region's football teams have had quite mixed fortunes, but there is plenty of other sporting activity going on. So all of the universities in the region um, have, um, have various teams that you can become a member of. Um, it's also a region where we tend to be quite at home on the water. So Cambridge particularly famous for, for rowing and because they're on the coast, it can be a really good opportunity maybe to have a go at sailing or something for the first time. Um, famously, we've inspired lots and lots of artists and um, it's a beautiful part of the country. It's very famous um, for its galleries, for um, its coastline, for um, photographers to come and visit. If you're studying at UEA, you'll actually have the Sainsbury Centre for Visual Arts right on your doorstep. It's actually on their campus um, and they have lots of big international exhibits every year. Um, in terms of gigs and music, there's absolutely no shortage, you know, everything from sort of in a pub on a Friday night to bigger venues, um, Norwich Waterfront, which is renowned for sort of launching really big acts. So they've had Nirvana in the past, they've had the Arctic Monkeys, and every year there's the, except for this year sadly, um, there's a Latitude Festival which takes place in Suffolk. Um, I have talked about the towns and cities, but I really do have to talk a little bit about what a beautiful place the east of England is. Um, we have some of the best beaches in the whole country. Um, most of them are also huge, so nice and peaceful and quiet, good for some socially distant sunbathing at the moment. Most parts of the region, you will be no more than kind of an hour uh, from the nearest beach. And um, from Ipswich, you could be on the beach by train or car in about half an hour. We're famously flat, and um, so it's a good place to get out and about on a bike. If you're sitting in Cambridge, um, it's absolutely a must have a bike. That is how everyone gets around. And fun fact, Met Office data shows stuff it receives 50% less annual rainfall than the UK average. And um, we get an, average, an extra 335 hours of sunshine a year. So hopefully there'll be lots of nice sunny days where you can go out and explore. Can't really talk, um, can't really finish this presentation, I guess, without giving kind of my own university a little bit of a plug. Um, so just highlighted some of the things that I think uh, make Suffolk as a university really special. So we teach in very small groups at Suffolk. We are a very small university. So that provides quite a unique experience in terms of the individual attention that you receive um, from your lecturers and tutors. That does often, you know, it's not uncommon for our lecturers to kind of sit and help um, support you with a specific essay and kind of um, help you in that way. It also means that um, our cohorts tend to become very, very tightly knit. So you will know everyone on your course. And it's really rewarding to kind of see how well our, our students support one another. Our courses and lectures are recognised as outstanding by our students in the 2019 What Uni Student Choice Awards. So we rank 10th for course and lecturers, and that's based on the feedback that our students have given about what they're studying and the people who are teaching them. We're focused on looking forward and your future career is integral to all of our degrees. 
so almost all of our degrees incorporate some kind of employability modules um, and many will require you to take work experience or work on real work real, real world projects we work closely with employers for example our graphic design students will be set um, actual challenge actual projects to work on that will actually be used and published and um, we also offer a lot of sandwich courses and um, which have a year in industry obviously built into the course I have already mentioned the waterfront location, but it is really something special. From our halls of residence, you can look out, see the water, see the boats, and it's kind of vibrant, but it's relaxing at the same time. So you have got the cafes, the bars, the restaurants, and everything on your doorstep. But likewise, you've got sort of a nice, quiet, peaceful stretch of water to live on. And then the last thing I would mention is that as a young university, we're always looking for ways to meet new challenges and our students are really important in that. So because you are sort of, you're not just a number, you are part of a small community, um, you will have an active role in shaping the present of the university, but also going forward. And we really pride ourselves on the amount of input that our students have um, into decisions that we make. Uh, if you kind of like what you've seen with regards to Suffolk, we've got a virtual open day on Saturday, 27th of June, which you can register for on our website. And we'd be really happy to take any questions that you come up with kind of after this session um, at schools at us.ac.uk. And now I will hand back to Megan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Amelia. Next up, we're heading to London and we're going to be talking to Mandy Core from the University of Roehampton. Hi everyone, I'm Mandy, a higher education advisor at the University of Roehampton and today I'm going to talk about studying in London and talk a little bit about what Roehampton is like. So I'll just show you my presentation I've prepared for today. So Roehampton is based in London and obviously everyone knows London is the capital of the UK. It's a gorgeous big city. I know everyone's heard of it as well and there's so much to do in the city too, and there's so many universities. I won't be able to cover every single one because London's just so big and it's got so many different universities in it, um, but you can ask any questions about them in the chat function. So this is London as a whole, and we've got universities all over London. So Roehampton is based in the heart of South West London. So you can see we're right down where Richmond Park is, next to Wimbledon, Barnes and Putney. Um, if you go a little bit more to the west, so the west side of London, you've got Brunel, you've got the University of West London. Um, and then if you're going further to central London, you've got City University, you've got King's, there's just so many more. And then if you're heading over to the east, you've got the University of East London as well. You've got London South Bank. So literally there are universities all over London if that's where you're thinking about studying. So London as a whole, there's so much to do in London. So in terms of Roehampton, it only takes us half an hour to get into central London from where we are. But the really unique thing about going to the University of Roehampton is that we're actually just a little bit outside the city centre, which you could kind of see from the slide before. Um, so we're not completely in the middle and the hustle bustle. And that's quite nice about London because not only do you have central London, but you also have greater London. So we still sit in central London, so we're in southwest London, um, but some universities sit just in the greater London section as well. Um, for us, we're actually in a really, really green part of London, which no one expects. So as you can see from the pictures in my background, um, we're actually really green, which no one ever thinks. So whenever I show them a picture of our campus, they're like, no way, that can't be London, but it really is. And every single uni is completely different in London. And um, there are two types of universities I can see from the question section. There are city universities and campus based universities. I would say that most universities in London tend to be city universities. This is just because London is pretty congested. Um, and so they're just a couple of different buildings based in the city. But then there are a few campus based universities. So Roehampton is one of those and um, Brunel is one of those. And it means that everything is all in one place. So we actually have two campuses where everything is literally all on your doorstep. Your accommodation is there, your library's there, your teaching facilities are there. You can roll out of bed straight into a lecture theatre building. It's like that sort of vibe. So you know what type of person you are. Some people are better at 
being in a city. So you might want to go to a city based university and others prefer to be on a campus. Like when I decided to go to university, I already knew that I wanted to go to a campus based uni because I wanted to be in the vibe of everything. I wanted to feel like I'm part of a community. So those are the sort of things you want to think about when you're choosing where to study. Um, London's great. There's lots of culture in London. There's the West End. So you can, if you're interested in theatre, um, you can go and watch some shows. You can go to the museums. You can do shopping. Roehampton's like max 40 minutes from Oxford Street. And um, so even if you needed a part time job, you can go and work in Oxford Street on the weekends if that's something you wanted to do. Um, and London also has loads of events all the time. Because we're the capital of the UK, lots of events come to us. We have festivals, um, we have fashion week and so on. And lots of things that will be relevant to the types of degrees that you might like to do as well. So this is actually what the University of Rockhampton looks like. Um, and that really is our campus. So like you can see, we've got two lakes, we've got a gym, we've got our education department on one side, um, and then we have our different colleges sat throughout the campus. So just like Cambridge, we're a collegiate university and we have four different colleges which sit within our university. And when you apply for a degree, you become a part of a college, which is really nice because you feel like you're part of a community. So not only are we a campus uni, which is already a pretty big community feeling, um, you're also part of a college. And we have college cups, we have a big summer ball at the end of the year, um, which is all based on our campus, which is really lovely as well. When you're based on a campus, you get a real student experience. Now I'm not taking anything away from universities that are based in cities because London is a city. So we're really unique that we're based in a, we're based in a city and we're also a campus. Um, some people prefer to commute and usually commuting students tend to go to city universities. Um, but with the campus university, I personally feel like you feel like you're more part of something and it's easier to get involved in activities because you're already living on campus as well. The unique thing about us is most universities tend to give you guaranteed first year accommodation if you apply by a certain date. But we actually have so much accommodation on campus that you can apply to live on campus in your second and third year if that's something you're interested in doing as well. And, and I feel like that way you get a real student experience. Like even if you're not sure about moving out, maybe just try and do it for your first year because at least then you'll get the feeling of knowing what it's like to actually live on campus and live in halls as well. Um, this is just some of the places on our campus. So you can see that picture on the left hand side is from Freshers and we have lots of space for our students to just have fun and do social activities. We've got accommodation there and that's one of our lakes as well. Moving on to social life. So not only is there the city that you can be going into, um, but we have a great student union. You can join lots of societies and clubs. We have the gym on campus. We have sport like pretty much every sports club you can think of from dance to football and tennis and then we've got general societies as well so me sports isn't a bit of me so I only really joined societies when I was at uni and we have some great societies everything from RuPaul Drag Race to society where you're literally just sitting and chatting with other people that like drinking tea so societies are a nice way for you to meet other people that have the same hobbies as you um, and these are really easy to do on a campus-based university but every university tends to offer and some type of society or club membership as well. Um, accommodation, so as I mentioned before, we have lots of accommodation based on our campus. It's a real big range from ensuite to shared bathrooms, eight people in a flat to much smaller people, a number of people in a flat. So it really depends on what you can afford and what you would like to go for as well. So costs, everyone always says, I bet London's really expensive. And you're right, we are the capital of the UK. So of course, it's living expenses are much more expensive in London. And take it from someone that grew up in London as well. Yeah, London is expensive. Um, but that's also why when you apply for your student loan, so those of you that are on the webinar right now that are UK students, when you apply for your maintenance loan, if you're going to a London university or if you live in London, you get a higher end of the maintenance loan. And that's because living costs in London are higher. So the government fully takes that into consideration when they when they give you money for your maintenance loan. So I wouldn't worry too much about the cost being higher because you get more of a maintenance loan as well. We actually have really affordable accommodation for actually being in London. So you should check out our website and see what the costs are. And there's a really good student finance calculator on the government website that helps you figure out how much money you'll be getting depending on what university you're going to as well. 
And um, so that's another way to figure things out. But also because you're in London, there are lots of job opportunities everywhere. We've got ASDA down the road. If you want to work at a supermarket, you can join our student ambassador scheme and um, you can work in loads of places. We have loads of education. So, Andy, so we're going to be talking to Sharon Tamali from the University of Hertfordshire, and she's going to be chatting about university in the southeast of England. Hello, um, my name is Sharon and I'm from the University of Hertfordshire. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what it's like to study in the South East. Um, yep, so I'm going to share my presentation with you now, if I can. Okay, so while we wait for me being able to share my screen with you, I'll just give you a bit of background about myself. So um, I did a criminology degree in the southeast of England, and, and I'm actually originally from London. So for me living in London, it's it was really important to study somewhere where I could easily get back to London, but also have that university campus experience as well. So I chose a university that was just on the outskirts on the southeast so that I can have those couple of years on campus, get that experience and still have the option to come back home um, to commute in the third year. So that was my reasoning. Um, some of you are gonna be a lot more braver to study further away. I'm sure some of you are from Scotland, Northern Ireland. So why would you travel this far to do your degree? So hopefully I will be able to share my screen with you. Here we go. Just one second. So why would you study in the Southeast uh, to do your degree? So firstly, um, if you were to start, decide to study at a university like Hertfordshire, we are somewhere where you will actually be at a place where you'll uh, be a part of a community that when they leave university, 96.5% of students um, are either in, in further education or employment once they leave within six months. Um, how do we do that? Well, we have a careers team that can support you for up to three years once you complete your degree. And we put a lot of emphasis in the facilities that we offer to make sure that you get to experience what it's like in the world of work before you're thrown out there into the deep end. So we put a lot of money in the facilities just as other universities do as well. Um, and we link with employers to make sure it replicates what it's like in the real world. So as you can see here we have a replica intensive care unit for example so where lots of our health related students are able to practice on dummies or they get to get experience with practicing emergency scenarios as well um, we also have um, an observatory as well so we have a campus a university but there are three different campuses and one of them is this Bayfordbury campus it's 200 acres of land with eight domes so for those of you interested in courses like astrophysics you get the opportunity to use these domes there are telescopes in the domes as well where you can do your exploring of stars and galaxies but also our geography students use this land as well there's a lake on this campus so a lot of our students do their and um, they practice their testings in the lakes there as well 
we have um, a replica crown uh, law court as well. So for those of you interested in a law degree, we have a mock law court where you'll be practicing your debating and mooting skills. Um, it's, it's actually really real life because we have um, EastEnders and Holby City that actually come and film our, their, their, their court scenes here as well. So you get that experience, real life experience without being thrown in the deep end. Um, you'll also get a chance if you do law to, to be a part of the pro bono clinic if you'd like to. So you'll actually be able to um, experience what it's like giving advice to the, to the general public. But obviously you'll get supported by, by our teachers as well. And that's just a taste of some of the facilities that our university has. Obviously other universities do have them too. Um, to help give you a taste of what it's like in the real world before you're thrown out there into the real world of work. So we also are one of the universities um, that encourage students to, to go out and do some work experience, put what you've learned in your university degree into practice. And you usually are paid for these work experience opportunities. But we also encourage you to gain an international perspective on the degree that you're doing. So most degrees, as you might have heard, um, give you the opportunity to do um, an extra year between years two and three where you can study abroad or you can work abroad or you can do a work placement in this country. We have partners if you study abroad with 170 70 universities across the world. So it's it's not an essential thing to do. It's just something that's really going to help you stand out with when you are applying for jobs. It's an excellent topic of discussion when you are in an interview um, and you're supported throughout the entire program as well for the work experience and the study abroad part. So where are we? We are um, in a place called Hatfield, Hertfordshire, and surrounding um, the outskirts of, of, of London, that's where we are, um, we have direct trains to London, so the train takes only 25 minutes to get to King's Cross or, or, or Moorgate, but we also have direct trains that take you even through London and further south as well, so places like Brighton, and then you can go up to Cambridge on the train. Um, if you were travelling from somewhere further, such as uh, Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, if you had, if you took the direct train to Euston is usually the most common station. It's literally one change over on the the Victoria Line, and then you're usually uh, fine to get on the line to the to the Hatfield station, which is where the university is. So it's a pretty easy uh, way to connect to the southeast. Um, if you do decide to, to study this far out. We also have um, buses as well. So we have the UNO buses, which is um, part of the bus system that our geography students actually help plan routes to, which go into the north of London and west of London as well. And we also have um, Arriva buses. Some of you might be a bit familiar with the Arriva buses that go to places like Essex, um, and Stevenage as well. Stevenage is quite a, a, a town that's close by to Hatfield where there is um, a leisure park that you could go to um, with a bar, cinemas, miniature golf and bowling. Um, some of you might be interested in Harry Potter as well. Um, that uh, Harry Potter world is actually in St Albans, which is a bus ride away. There's also Welling, Luton, which are really great places for um, shopping very close by and actually Luton is one of the the areas where there is another university Bedfordshire there as well and there is an airport for those of you traveling further out or if you want an easy place to to be able to get to internationally um the national express bus actually comes here as well so if you are coming down here there are national express buses that take you to the airport so it takes you to the Luton area and uh, Heathrow airport so you are very well connected nationally and internationally if you do decide to to study in the southeast or Hertfordshire so we are a campus university um, so you've heard about campus and city universities um, Hertfordshire is a campus one where you don't need to leave the campus if you don't want to for anything at all. We have everything on site. We've got a bank, we've got bars, restaurants, 24 hour learning resource center, a gym, sports village, lots to do on campus. But of course, when you do get to university, you don't have to stay on campus. You can travel out as much as you want um, at your leisure. 
We also have uh, 29 sports clubs on, on the university campus. Um, actually, every Wednesday afternoon, the university closes classes so that you can take up a sports activity in the afternoon. Or if you're like me, it's time to, to chill out for the afternoon, but it's up to you what you decide to do. Um, if you're not into sports, there are other clubs and societies. You've got over a hundred of them. So it could be dance, um, film society, Nintendo, vegan. Um, and if there isn't a society that's already been created, get yourself 10 people and then create a society. The student union will help you. Um, and that's quite common with other universities as well. We respect and welcome people from from all parts of the world. We're, um, we're a very diverse community. We have students coming from a hundred different countries across the world. Wherever you come from, we support and welcome you to come and enjoy studying and living at the university. So of course, during these times, um, we're doing our absolute best to make sure we follow guidelines and still try and restore the university study and life experience to as normal as possible, but as safely as possible. But in the meantime, our team are here to help you. Um, if you need support with preparing for university, um, just drop us an email and we'll be happy to answer any questions, but hopefully I'll get to speak to you in the live session in a moment as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon. So you might have noticed just before Sharon's presentation started, we had a couple of technical hiccups. Um, Mandy's presentation was cut a little bit short. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we're just going to pass back over to Mandy from the University of Wolverhampton, and she's just going to finish up her presentation with you before we go on to your live questions. Hi, everyone. I'm really sorry about that, but I just have a few more slides that I wanted to show you. Um, so here are our academic departments. So I've gone through most of those. And like I said, we specialize in education. Um, and what I really wanted to say was, it's great that we're all talking about our universities and the different areas that we're based in, but it's really good for you to also do your research about what course you want to study. So make sure you find the right course. Don't just get your heart set on a university. Make sure the course is right for you as well. And the best way to do that is to go to all of our digital open days and um, to go to online taster sessions to figure out if the course is right for you as well. And on that note, we actually just started our digital open day, which is today, so it's not too late to join as well. But we also run taster sessions pretty much every afternoon and they're free to go to. You can go to as many as you like to figure out if the course is right for you. Um, and that's all of our social media. And that's our email address. If you have any questions, you're welcome to ask us anything you like. Great. Thank you very much, Mandy. I hope you all enjoyed traveling across the UK with us and we visited lots of lovely universities. What we're going to do now is answer some of your questions that you've been submitting over on both the Zoom chat and the YouTube chat today. So we're going to start with Kyle up in Glasgow. How does a Scottish university vary much for English students compared to an English university? Hi. Um, yeah, so the biggest difference really is in that flexibility that I talked about and um, the, the opportunity to study a range of subjects in your first two years before finally deciding what it is that you want to get your degree in is something that most Scottish universities offer in the likes of the sciences, the arts and the social sciences. Other than that, there's not um, huge differences. It's more about where you want to study and making sure that you've you've had a look at the, the different options that are available if you decide to, to come to Scotland. We've got a huge range of different universities, just like England. So it's really just about doing your research. Thank you very much, Kyle. Next up, we have a question for Bex from the University of Huddersfield. Is it better to have more contact time in a course? And what are the benefits of having more contact time as opposed to less when you're studying at university? Um, I'd say that neither is necessarily better. Um, contact time can vary depending on uh, the subject that you're actually studying. So subjects, for example, such as science, um, you may find that you're in university more because you may have to do um, experiments and a lot of lab work, but obviously stuff that you can't do when you're at home. Whereas a course, um, just to think of a random example, um, such as history, 
And um, that is a course that lends itself um, to independent study a lot more. So you may find that you're not in, um, in university as many hours as what someone who's studying um, one of more practical degrees might be. But it doesn't mean that um, your university course is less work. It just means that you may have more independent study to do um, alongside the contact hours that you do have. And I'd say, um, I know this has been mentioned by the other universities, but I would definitely say that doing research and attending virtual open days is really important. If you can, um, and you do get an opportunity to speak to academics at these virtual open days, and they'll be able to explain to you um, some of the um, learning styles and ways in which you will learn the contents of different degrees as well. So definitely um, find out more information and do some more research. Um, but yeah, as I say, there's not necessarily a better, um, it's not necessarily better if you've got more contact hours, it is usually course dependent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bex. Next up, we have a question for Andy from Manchester Met. What assessment methods are used at university and does it vary at each university? Ah, uh, yeah. Thanks for thanks for the question. Um, in terms of assessment methods, it does vary. Well, it varies from university to university, but perhaps more importantly, course to course. Um, for example, at Manchester Met, some of our courses will be far more uh, weighted in terms of exams. Others will be more weighted in terms of assignments. Some will be a bit more 50-50. If you're doing a very practical course, some of your um, assessments will be work-based assessments uh, from your placements that you might be doing and things like that. The best thing to do with this, if this is something that concerns you, is to go to the university websites of the universities you're interested in, uh, look up the course it is that you want to apply for. And certainly in Manchester Met's case, and I know this is the case with a lot of other universities, they'll have a breakdown on there how each course is assessed. For example, it would say 50% assignments, 50% exams or something like that. Thank you very much, Andy. Next up, we have a question for Sharon from the University of Hertfordshire. Is the reputation of university as a whole equally important as its reputation for its subject individually? Thank you for that question. I would say when you're doing your research, take every single thing into consideration. So if you are looking at league tables, do look at the league tables of the university as a whole, but pay a little bit more attention to the where the, the course ranks itself. So, for example, you might apply for a university where it's ranked a little bit lower, but if you were to apply for economics with us, for example, it's fifth in the country. But also, I wouldn't just base your research just on league tables. I would say speak to the students who are currently doing the course because they're going to give you the best perspective on what it's like to do that degree because they are actually doing it they are living that life so i would recommend definitely take in the consideration of the degree of the university itself but the course also and make sure you go to virtual open days um, and if you can do uni buddy chats with students who are currently doing the degree they will give you um a real life perspective on what the course will be like. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Next up, a question for Mandy from Roehampton. There's over 20,000 courses available um, to apply for at university. How do you decide what courses you want to take when there are so many different ones for a subject that you're interested in? That's a really, really good question. And actually it's kind of a question that I was going through when I was applying to university. And the best thing to do once you know what you want to study so for example let's take philosophy for example you then need to do your research into modules and i know we're all saying the same thing is to do your research but honestly it's so important so go onto a university website go through the course structure and then look in the modules section when you get to the module section actually read through the modules just because something's called a ba philosophy at roehampton doesn't mean it's the same as a ba philosophy at the university of hertfordshire just because it says something doesn't mean that's just what it is and um, especially for really broad subjects like sociology philosophy history there are so many eras and there's only so many lecturers at that university and all of them specialize in different things so you want to make sure that you already check that they do the sort of modules you're interested in because the last thing you want to do is get there and then realize actually i don't even like this era of history um, so yeah do your research into your modules and then choose the right university and course for you thanks megan 
Thank you, Mandy. Next up, we have a question for Amelia from Suffolk. Can you apply to multiple university, multiple courses at the same university? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's not generally a problem. It's certainly at Suffolk, we don't have an issue with it at all. Um, obviously, it will be very challenging to do that if you're, the courses you're applying for are very different, because I think we'll probably talk shortly a bit about personal statements, but it'll be very difficult, obviously, to write a good personal statement for two very different subjects. Um, Bear in mind as well that whereas individual different universities can't see which other unis you've applied for, if you've applied for two courses at the same university, that university can see. And whilst probably most universities won't have a problem with that, it might be that there could potentially be a question about which subject you're actually kind of more committed to. Um, I should probably mention as well that um, Oxford and Cambridge would be an exception to this where they will not allow you to apply for more than one um, course at the same institution. Um, you also can't apply to those two universities um, in the same UCAS cycle. So generally it's not a problem, but do you think carefully about how you'll kind of balance the application? Thank you. Thank you very much, Amelia. Next up, we're going to be doing some more questions. So we're going to go around all of our panellists again and they'll each be answering another question for you. First up, we have one for Kyle up in Glasgow. Can you integrate different degrees with medicine at Glasgow? Is the medicine degree flexible in the same way as the others? And does the same fourth year free structure apply to the medicine degree? Hi, um, so medicine is one of our professional degrees, so it, it doesn't fall under our flexible degrees at all. So medicine, vet med, dentistry, education, these are all programmes that sit on their own. And because medicine is a five year course, same as dentistry across the UK, um, unfortunately, we don't offer a free year as part of the medicine course or the vet med or the dentistry course. Um, the... I'm trying... Have I missed one of your questions, Megan? You can jump back in. It was just about the fourth year free part, Kyle, and if that's the same for medicine. Yep, so that's only that's only available for programmes that would be three years in England, um, but four years in Scotland. So medicine, vet, med and dentistry don't apply to the, the free year. Um, I was in flexible degree mode when I was given that information earlier. Cheers, Megan. That's great, thank you very much. Next up is a question for Bex, and this is a popular question that Amelia's already touched on. If you're looking to apply for a joint honours course, so that's when you're doing two different courses such as history and philosophy together under one degree, what advice do you have for writing a personal statement to cover those two areas? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, it can be difficult, especially if you're applying um, for multiple courses in different areas. But when it comes to um, joint honours degree, usually when it's a joint honours degree, um, they will have some overlaps or the subjects will um, be related in some way. So you should find this a lot easier um, than doing one for completely different subjects. Um, so I would try and find the links between the subjects um, and try to include those in your personal statement um, and just make sure that you do your research um, and try and talk about, obviously you're not just talking about the course you're applying for, you're talking about um, your skills and things that you've done as well. Um, so don't concentrate the whole personal statement on trying to justify the two subjects. But yeah, I would say just try to find the link um, and try to talk about the link between the two subjects as well, thanks. Thanks very much, Bex. Next up, we have a question for Andy from Manchester Met. Um, talking about alternative work experience, and um, lots of students have had their work experience cancelled this summer, so they're looking at doing different online things. Where can students have a look for online courses or MOOCs? And do you need to have got the certificate at the end of this in order to mention it in your application to university? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it's certainly challenging at the moment, isn't it, trying to get any work experience um, with offices and things like that that are open. But yeah, um, the key thing with your personal statement is to get across your interest in the course and to show sort of your passion and dedication for it. If 
you can do an online course or something like that, great. It will certainly get that across to the university that you're applying for and make sure that you make the most, if you are going to go and do an online course, make sure that you make the most of that in your personal statement. And if you are interviewing for that course as well, um, you know, take some examples along with you um, when you go along to the interview to, to impress the, uh, the, the admissions tutor for that course. Great, thank you very much, Andy. Next up, we have a question for Sharon from Hertfordshire. Am I at a disadvantage if I decide to retake a year in sixth form if I'm not happy with my grades or if I decide to change the subjects that I'm doing? I would say that you wouldn't be at a disadvantage. Well, with us, you wouldn't be at a disadvantage if you started your um, university um, a year later than, than most. And as long as you've got the grades and you've got a strong personal statement, no, nope, you won't be at a disadvantage. A lot of people um, don't go straight from school to university and take a gap year. So, you know, if you're taking that year to, to better your grades, you're not gonna be at a disadvantage, not with us anyway. Thank you. Question. Next up, we have a question for Mandy from the University of Roehampton. Um, so is it significantly more expensive to live in London and how do your campus accommodation prices, the lovely campus that we saw just a little while ago, how do they compare to privately renting a flat or a house in London? That's a great question. Um, London is affordable, especially as I mentioned before, because you'll be getting the higher end of the maintenance loan. So you'll be getting slightly more than other people get. And that's because usually the rent is a little bit higher. Um, usually, and I would say this with most universities, living on a campus is slightly more expensive than living privately. Um, but that's also because most universities have 24 hour security. So you're taking into consideration like those extra little bits that you're paying for as well. Um, Living on campus is great. Try and do it for your first year at least. But I would recommend maybe in your second and third year living off campus, which is what I did when I was a student. Um, usually it's a little bit more cheaper and you can live with your friends as well. So I remember living in like a six bedroom house, all girls. It was loads of fun and it was slightly cheaper and a little bit more affordable for me than living on campus. Um, so yeah, it's definitely doable. Thank you very much, Mandy. Next up, another question for Amelia from Suffolk. If I'd like to live at home and commute to university instead of moving there, would this affect my university experience at all? Hi, yeah. Um, I guess it is a different experience. Like for a lot of people, I guess, moving away from home for the first time and kind of living with other um you know students who are in the same boat as you and things like that is sort of a big part of the university experience um but in Suffolk quite a lot of our students are local and they do choose to commute in particularly perhaps if they're studying part-time we've got um older students who maybe have got kind of other commitments um that means that they don't want to or can't live on campus um it's just different because you can still access you know all our students have the same access to um facilities social facilities they can still join all the clubs and societies and be kind of really active um you know in in student life and there are all sorts of reasons that people might decide that they prefer to live at home for a start it's nearly always cheaper um if you can stay living at home um so it's definitely not at all kind of a bad option um i guess it might be difficult if you live a significant distance and you need to be kind of commuting into university um you know more or less every day to go to lectures and things like that but if that won't be a problem for you then um it's a perfectly good it's a perfectly good option it's just not exactly the same experience as as living in halls thank you very much next up we're going to do one more question for each of our panelists and we're going to start with carl in glasgow again um, you mentioned a little bit about this earlier, Kyle, but some of our viewers have asked us to go into a little bit more detail on it. What is the UK access bursary for students for England who want to study in Scotland? Is this additional to maintenance loan and student loan that you would get from Student Finance England? Hi, yeah, I, I'm trying to share my screen just to go back to that slide. 
there we go. Um, so this is a University of Glasgow bursary that's available. So should you apply to the University of Glasgow, in addition to any student finance that you get from Student Finance England or other um, providers, um, this would be a bursary that's offered dependent on household income. So the Access Bursary and the Excellence Scholarship are both uh, you can you can receive both, um, but they are in addition to any loans or funding that you get from from elsewhere. So this is if you apply to the University of Glasgow and decide to join us in Glasgow, um, based on your household income, we can offer the bursaries on the top level, and we can also offer the excellent scholarship if you attain three A's at A level for programmes that don't have three A's as their entry requirement. Thanks, Megan. Thank you very much, Kyle. Next up, we've got a question for Bex from the University of Huddersfield. What kind of questions should you be asking when you're going along to virtual open days and things like that? Yeah, again, um, a good question. Um, I'd say um, at virtual open days, make sure that maybe you've done a little bit of research before um, because it's not the same as going to a physical open day where you can sort of walk around um, and go and sort of have a mull around before you ask questions. So I would maybe prepare a little bit more before a virtual open day. Um, in terms of questions, ask things like, what is it like to study at this particular university? Um, ask if they have um, societies for the things you're interested in. So think about questions you might want to ask for students, such as those things, but also think about really subject specific questions for the academics. So if you've looked on the website, make sure you look at the different modules on the courses. And if you're thinking, oh, well, I'd like to find a little bit um, more out about this particular module, such as how it's assessed or uh, we'll be touching on this particular part of the module. Um, make sure you ask really specific questions to get the most out of a virtual open day. Um, but also it's not just about talking to students and academics. It's about all the support services, which is obviously what your tuition fees go towards as well. So ask questions such as what support is available. Um, so if you have any disabilities, um, make sure that you ask those questions to the student support teams. Um, but if you've got any general questions just about your application and things like that, then often people like myself from schools liaison, um, there is a chat function to speak to us as well. So think about specific questions for maybe each department um, to take into the virtual open day with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bex. Next up, we have another question for Andy from Manchester Met. Uh, for students looking to take a gap year once they finish their A-levels, should they mention this when they apply to university or should they keep it to themselves and then just defer their place once they've been accepted? Hi there, it's certainly not something that, that you need to mention. You, you can do if you want to, it shouldn't affect their decision-making process in any way, but it's not something that, that you have to mention. I think with, if you are looking to take a gap year, it is good to get that offer under your belt and then you can look to defer that um, once you've got it. However, um, it is also worth checking in with each university that you want to apply for, um, perhaps beforehand, if they do, um, offer uh, deferrals because some universities do, some universities don't, and also within a university they may offer deferrals for some courses and not others. So uh, my main piece of advice with that is rather than worrying about putting it on the personal statement, check with those universities that you're interested in if they do offer deferrals. Thank you very much Andy. Next up, kind of along the same vein, is a question for Sharon from the University of Hertfordshire. Can all students look into taking a study abroad year when they're at university or is this something that only specific universities, courses, students can apply for? Thank you. Um, so at the University of Hertfordshire, most courses you're able to do a second an extra year between years two and three, where you can study abroad, work abroad or work here if you wanted to. It's not available to all courses such as um, health and social work courses who already have their work experience embedded in part of their degree. Um, and there might be some science courses as well, but majority of courses you can if you want to, you don't have to. Um, 
that's the case for the University of Hertfordshire, I would definitely recommend for the universities that you're applying for, double check with them um, to see if if the, the policy is similar or, 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 or different, but majority you can with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon. Next up, we have another question for Mandy from Roehampton. And Mandy joined us a couple of weeks ago to do a really great um, webinar about personal statements. That's available on our YouTube channel if you wanted to catch up on that. Um, so Mandy, we just have a quick refresh question for you. What do you have any quick do's or don'ts for personal statements? Oh, that's like my favorite topic. <laughs> so, some do's make sure you get lots of people to read it for you because you know what when you keep reading the same thing again and again you already know what you're reading and what you're looking for and but when someone else reads it like with a fresh mind and um, they can pick out if there are any like mistakes so at least that way you don't send it off with any mistakes um don't don't try and be funny it never works like i honestly i've never read a personal statement where someone tried to be funny and it really worked so don't do that don't overuse quotes because that happens so much um so i read personal statements all the time and everyone always starts with a quote like just try not try not to do that like go on google get some inspiration um for other people's personal statements obviously don't copy any of them that's a big don't don't plagiarize um but get some inspo but try not to be using quotes too much and um, try to be as enthusiastic as possible I know it's really hard to write a whole, basically a whole page, like bragging about yourself, but this is like the only time in your life where you need to do it. So be as po put yourself in a really positive light and be really enthusiastic about the course that you're interested in studying. Thank you very much, Mandy. And now we have our last question for Amelia from the University of Suffolk. So if I'm applying for university and maybe a couple of my friends come into the same university as me, can I apply to stay in halls accommodation with them? Or is that something that I'd need to look at maybe getting a private flat or something if I wanted to live with my friends? Thank you for that question. Um, it is unusual um, to be able to request to live with certain people if you are staying in halls of residence. Um, generally speaking, universities will kind of jumble people up. So you'll probably get kind of, you'll get to say which halls you might want to stay in, um, but you probably won't, at least in your first year, be able to say who you want to stay with. Um, that is actually a great thing. Like when I went first went to uni, um, I was on a corridor of 12, um, six boys, six girls, um, all over the country, all over the world a good selection of um, different courses and it really helped me to make friends because I made friends with them and they made friends with people on their courses who I then met through them so it was a great way to kind of build up a network. Um, it's more common in second and third year whether you stay in halls of residence which the a lot of our students if not the majority do at Suffolk or whether you go and rent privately um, if you're renting privately then you would just go and rent a house with say in my third year for example there were six girls living in a house together who I'd met um, during my time at university um, and we just signed a lease together um, often in second and third year if you're living in halls you can request to share a corridor or a flat with um, certain individuals but I just I really I actually think in many ways it's better to kind of be on your own to kind of, well you're not on your own but you know to kind of meet new people and um, not necessarily just limit yourself to sort of the friends that you've um, come with from home because I think a big part of uni is meeting new people having that sort of independence and just it's really exciting to get to know um, all those new people from all over the place. Thank you very much Amelia. Unfortunately that was our last question for today. If you do have anything else that you'd like to ask our panellists or if you'd like to find out a little bit more information about any of them you can always head over to their websites or if you'd like their contact details and um, we live stream this onto our YouTube so you can just re-watch the live stream and write down any details that you want to contact. Um, I hope you've enjoyed travelling around the UK with me today. It's been really fun to explore different universities while staying at home without the stress of having 
trying to get on trains and go all over the country. Um, if you do want to have a chat to all of these universities who've been with us today, and quite a lot more as well, we are running a virtual fair next Wednesday, the 17th of June. So there'll be no webinar Wednesday next week. Um, hundreds of universities, colleges, training providers are going to be coming along to that. You can chat to them, you can explore their stands, you can view 10 live webinars just like this one. Um, it's a really great opportunity if you're not quite decided on where you want to go yet and you want to have a chat with lots of different universities and figure out if they're the right one for you. So head over to our website, that's www.ukuniversitysearch.com. Scroll down and click on virtual fair and you'll be able to sign up for free there. And um, you can also have a look at our upcoming webinars on our website. So two weeks from now, we will be doing a special clearing and adjustment webinar with the University of East Anglia. And you can sign up for that on our website as well. OK, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm sure you want to join me in saying a massive thank you to all of our panellists. We have the University of Glasgow, University of Huddersfield, Manchester Metropolitan University, University of Suffolk, University of Roehampton and the University of Hertfordshire today. So it's been a very busy day. I hope to see you again in the future and at our virtual fair next week. Thank you very much from me and the UK University Search Team. <laughs>